Our gospel reading this morning that was just read for the fourth Sunday in Advent is called the Annunciation. The word Annunciation means to be announced. And in our reading, the angel is making the biggest announcement of all, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. But this text, it really highlights the beauty of God's gift-giving nature. As the anticipation for the reception of gifts, as demonstrated with the kids, is probably very high right now, it's fitting and appropriate for us to focus on the gift being given from our gift-giving God. Really, the gift that all those gifts under your tree represent, the generosity of God in sending His Son, Jesus. And truthfully, as I shared with the children, maybe you'll get that gift you're desperately hoping to receive. Maybe you won't. But the Annunciation reminds us that even if we don't get the gift we want under the tree, that shouldn't come anywhere close to ruining our Christmas, because we've indeed received the greatest gift of all, the one we truly need this Christmas. But as I looked through the Annunciation, I realized this goes beyond the reason for the season, Jesus, or just the greatest gift ever given. All those things are true, but God is even more generous than we can imagine. And as we go through the Annunciation and the Gospel reading today, God gives so many gifts to Mary, not just the gift of Jesus, but so much more. God's first gift that He gives to her is that He comes to us, even the smallest of us. Before this text, no one had ever heard of Mary. Mary of Nazareth was not a person of note in the world. She wasn't important by our standards, and yet God comes to her and through her works the greatest act of deliverance in all time. But as was evidenced by the song we sang just a moment ago, when God comes to us in our lives and calls us to something, it's not always easy. Uncertainty and doubt and fear come along with it, along with a feeling of isolation that maybe I'm the only one who's walking this path. So God gives His second gift, a promise to be with us. You see, God is making a dwelling among His people when He sends Jesus. He's taking on our flesh in order to redeem it and redeem us because He wants to dwell with us. Because Mary is afraid. She doesn't understand the nature of this greeting from the angel. And she's also unsure of how it's all going to work out because it doesn't seem like it follows the normal rules. And so she asks questions in her fear. And God answers her question and tells her how it is that she will come to be with child even though she's a virgin and has not known a man. But it goes even further and gives her a third gift someone who's walking a very similar road as she is, her cousin Elizabeth. She's not alone in God coming to someone who is not supposed to be with child and then is with child. She has someone to walk with now on this path because perhaps it's the worst feeling and maybe the loneliest feeling when you feel like you're on a path that nobody else is. And that nobody can really understand what it is you're facing or going through. And so God gives Elizabeth to Mary. God's fourth gift given is faith. I've always been struck, even when I was a little child, to Mary's response to this announcement. It's such a beautiful example of the gift of faith being given from God to His people. How else could she have responded the way she did to this kind of announcement? 
It's something we hear all the time at Christmas, so it sounds normal to us. But close your eyes and imagine for a moment that you're Mary. You're betrothed to be married. And an angel appears to you and says that you're going to bear the Son of God. I would chalk that up to a hallucination or some weird dream. And it would certainly frighten me. Not just the presence of the angel, but what he's telling me, just as it frightens her. But at the end of all of that, she responds in faith. Martin Luther emphasizes that this is perhaps the most amazing aspect of this whole section, is that Mary actually believes what God is saying to her through the angel Gabriel. You see, we understand faith to be a gift from God that gift given to Mary, so she can actually believe these words that are being spoken to her, as amazing and out, outrageous as they are. We understand this kind of gift of faith. It's part of what we confess. We believe that God's Holy Spirit is the reason that we have faith. It's not an act of will of our own where we come and we hear what Jesus has to say and we think to ourselves, well, that makes sense. I think I'll believe that. Because half the time when God shows up, He says what He says to Mary here, and it makes no sense. And it's frightening and challenging. And if we were left to ourselves, we'd be like Joseph when he receives his message from the angel. I'm getting out of here. I don't know what's going on, but I don't want any part of it. But we understand that faith is a gift. Here, this part of our meaning to the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, and sanctified and kept me in the true faith, God's gift of faith given to Mary. And last but certainly not least, God's fifth gift, His Son. His Son sent to save His people from their sins. It is true that this gift is what Christmas is all about. That's why we're gathered here. That's why there are extra services. That's why we're making the outrageous and unreasonable demand that you come to church twice in one day. Because Jesus is here. And He's come to save you from your sins. To give you eternal life and the perfect righteousness that can only come from the Messiah, the Son of God, whose gift and presence is announced to you this day. The Christ, the Messiah, is coming. And He's coming for you. Now, all these gifts that Mary received just in these short 12 verses are amazing. But what's even more amazing is that when Jesus comes, all of these gifts, God is giving to you as well. That's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the good news I share with you today is that God gives each of these gifts to all of you. God has come to you. Yes, you. You don't have to go far to find people who've never heard of you. And yet the God of the universe comes to you just as He did to Mary all those years ago. And He has called you to do things. Mary had the unique calling of bearing the Son of God. But you have vocational callings of being brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, neighbors, co-workers, brothers and sisters in Christ. And at times, like with Mary, that call can seem isolating, especially in a world that rejects Him and rejects those who follow Him. He may ask you to do things at times that you don't understand the purpose of and that make you afraid. But just as with Mary all those years ago, God promises to be with you in the midst of those things 
and he's brought you into a community of people who are on the same path, who can walk with you and understand what it is that you're going through. And not only that, but in Jesus, you have a God who knows intimately your challenges and your sufferings and your sins, for he bore all of those in his own body for you. God has given you faith. That's the reason you're here today. I hate to break it to you, but you're not here because you're extra smart or you learned or figured something out that everybody else didn't. You're here because God gave you the gracious gift of faith through the power of His Holy Spirit. Like Mary, you heard God's Word, maybe from a parent or a pastor or just your own reading of the Scriptures, and as crazy as it seemed, you believed it. Your life of faith, just like your regular life, began from a gracious act of creation from God. In mercy, He sent you the gift of faith to believe all that He has said. You're here today because God has, by the grace of His Holy Spirit, given that gift to you. And finally, the greatest of all the gifts that He has given, His Son. Just as He was given to Mary, He has given to you. He has come to save you from your sins. When it says that He's come to save His people, you are His people. He has placed His name on you. That's the promise He made in your baptism, that you are now His own, a beloved child of God. Jesus has come to save you. So tomorrow morning, when you wake up excited to look at what's waiting for you under the tree, or to get together with family, and enjoy the wonderful blessings of God in your life. Don't place your hope and your joy in those things. They are wonderful gifts indeed, but maybe this Christmas you don't have the gift of family, or you aren't able to get together with friends, or maybe you didn't get the gift you are really hoping to receive under your tree. It happens. But all of these gifts from God are yours. They cannot be taken from you, and they stay with you always, just as Christ is always with you. So now that you know that the real gifts of Christmas, those gifts that we truly need, the one that all the other gift givings represent, they're already yours, and they cannot be taken from you. Now, Lord, we pray that those gifts allow us to respond as Mary does in our gospel reading today with such faith, faith given as a gift, so that we too can say, Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.